Hey my friend, in this video, we are going to continue in our series on the Tabernacle of Moses. Now that we have gone through the outer gate and we're now in the outer court, the first piece of furniture that an Old Testament Hebrew worshiper would see is the bronze altar of sacrifice. It's gonna be a really good one today because there's so much symbolism here as it relates to the work and person of Jesus Christ and the sacrifice that he offered. So that my friend is coming up today. You do not want to miss this video. Hey, my friend, welcome back to The Beat. My name is Alan Parr. Thank you so much for tuning in. If this is your first time here, it's a pleasure. And hey, if you want to know the entire story of the Bible, I've got a free ebook for you. Click the link in the description box below. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing and hit that little bell notification so you'll be notified every single time a new video drops. Okay, so I'm not gonna waste your time. Let's jump in and start reading about the bronze altar of sacrifice. Now remember, you've already come through the outer gate and this is literally the first piece of furniture that you will see. And in a moment, I'm gonna take you, once again on every video that I do on this series, a 3D tour through the tabernacle as it relates to the bronze altar. So let's read about it. Exodus 27 says this, using acacia wood. Now let's stop right there. You can see already the symbolism that is being set up here by the author under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. This altar was where the animals would go and it was made of acacia wood. My friend, in the same way, the cross that Jesus Christ offered himself as a permanent sacrifice for our sins was made out of what? You guessed it, wood. That is how Jesus is the fulfillment of this. One of those ways, let's keep reading. Construct a square altar, seven and a half feet wide, seven and a half feet long, and four and a half feet high. Make horns for each of its four corners so that the horns and altar are all one piece. Overlay the altar with bronze. Make ash buckets, shovels, basins, meat forks, and fire pans all of bronze. Make a bronze grating for it and attach four bronze rings at its four corners. Okay, so now I'm gonna take you inside 3D tour so I can show you and really explain what action took place at this bronze altar of sacrifice. Come on, follow me, let's go inside. Okay, so once you bring your animal past the outer gate, you will see this bronze altar of sacrifice. So you tie that animal down and the first thing you had to do is you had to lay your hand on the animal so that you're identifying and acknowledging that this innocent animal is dying because of your sin. Then you would take a knife and you would slit the throat of this innocent animal and the priest would be there to catch the blood in a bowl and as you can see that animal is now dead and now you would take that animal over to this table right here where the priest would then cut that animal up in several different pieces as you can see right here and uh, one piece as you're going to see was given to the priest and uh, another piece was given to the worshiper for the worshiper to take home and, um, and eat, and so the priests would then um, take this meat, and then they would come over to this bronze altar of sacrifice, and they would put that meat in there, as you can see right there, and they would begin to offer that meat up to the Lord as a sweet-smelling savor unto the Lord. And so while that was happening, there was a priest and he would also take blood from this animal and dip that blood and place it on the four horns of the altar. And this blood sacrifice was what was necessary to accomplish the atonement and the forgiveness of the people's sins. Okay, so first and foremost, let's talk about the people of sacrifice. In other words, who actually made these sacrifices on the bronze altar of sacrifice? Now, there were four different groups of people that had to make sacrifices. And the first was the priest himself. 
Now, what we're gonna learn here is that depending upon your position in the community, you were required by God to bring a different sacrifice. We'll talk about the importance of that in just a moment. So if you were a priest and you were coming to uh, to offer sacrifices for your sin, you would have to bring a bull, which was considered a higher value than some of the other animals. Let's read about it. Leviticus 4, 3 says, if the high priest sins, bringing guilt upon the entire community, he must give a sin offering for the sin he has committed. He must present to the Lord a young bull with no defect. See, high value for a priest because the priests were, um, you know, held at a higher standard than some of the other people groups. Now let's keep going. It also says here, if the entire congregation was guilty of some particular sin, this is what they would have to do. It says here, if the entire Israelite community sins by violating one of the Lord's commands, but the people don't realize it, they are still guilty. When they become aware of their sin, the people must bring a young bull as an offering for their sin and present it before the tabernacle. So that's the second group of people that uh, were required to bring a sacrifice is the community at large. Now, the third group were just the leaders in the community. Now, let's read about their sacrifice. Once again, Leviticus, if one of Israel's leaders sins by violating one of the commands of the Lord, his God, but doesn't realize it, he is still guilty. Now, let's just stop right there for a second. That lets us know that even though we may not be aware of our sin, that doesn't mean that we're not guilty in God's sight. Let me give you an example. Let's say I'm speeding along the highway and I'm not aware that I'm going beyond the speed limit. When the police officer pulls me over, they aren't going to excuse me because I wasn't aware that I was speeding. It's my job to figure out what the speed limit is so that I can go the speed limit and obey the law. In the same way, ignorance does not exempt us from being guilty before the Lord. Now let's keep going. When he becomes aware of his sin, he must bring as his offering a male goat with no defects. So once again, leaders have to bring a male goat, which a goat was considered of less value. A priest had to bring a bull. Now what about if you're just a regular common person, right? Then let's look at that. If any of the common people sin by violating one of the Lord's commands, but they don't realize it, they are still guilty. When they become aware of their sin, they must bring as an offering for their sin a female goat with no defects. So a female goat was considered, once again, of lesser value than the male goat. So the application here is quite clear that God holds leaders to a much higher standard than he does lay people. Now, let's talk about the significance of laying your hand on the head of the animal. Notice what it says here. They must lay a hand on the head of the sin offering and slaughter it at the place where burnt offerings are slaughtered. Then the priest will dip his finger in the blood, put it on the horns of the altar for burnt offerings. He will pour out the rest of the blood at the base of the altar. So this is super important. Don't miss this unless, if you don't get anything else out of this video, don't miss this. Whenever you came with your animal, you had to identify with that animal. You had to acknowledge that this innocent animal who had done nothing wrong is now dying because of your personal sin. Let that sink in for just a moment. That was supposed to prick their hearts so that they wouldn't continue in sin. Because think about if you had to take one of your precious loved animals from your flock, and then see that animal's head get snapped and see the blood of that animal coming out, something in you should say, I don't want to kill any more of my animals because they're precious to me. Let me straighten up and get my act together. But the Bible says that there were not enough bulls and goats and lambs to offer sacrifices for the people's sin. In the same way, my friend, Whenever we look at the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross, it is supposed to prick our hearts because we know it is our sin 
that put Jesus, an innocent lamb of God on the cross. And it was because of our own disobedience that he had to die. So when we think about the cross of Christ and the beatings and the scourgings and the whippings and the crown of thorns and the the the, the uh, nails and the hands and the feet and the stabbing in the side and all the different things that they did to him, that's supposed to make us say, let me give my best offering to the Lord because I'm responsible for him being on the cross. So another point of application here, notice, is that if we want to ultimately have fellowship with God, it starts by acknowledging and confessing our own personal sin. Now let's take a deeper look at the symbolism of this bronze altar. In the Old Testament, it was a lamb or a bull or a goat that took away the sins of the people. This is the reason why in the New Testament, John calls Jesus the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Notice he says, the next day John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Are you seeing this? Are you seeing how Jesus is the ultimate fulfillment of everything that we see in this Old Testament tabernacle, my friend, which lets you know that the Holy Spirit is the only one that will be able to write this type of scripture, right? The fact that God could construct such an idea in the Old Testament thousands of years before the birth of Christ and then fulfill every single piece of it through Christ proves that there was a divine author working in the background throughout all eternity. Notice Leviticus 1.9 describes this offering in this way. But the internal organs and the legs must first be washed with water Then the priest will burn the entire sacrifice on the altar as a burnt offering. Here it is. It is a special gift, a pleasing aroma to the Lord. See, it would burn these offerings and the smoke that would rise up to the Lord was pleasing. It was a pleasing, it was a sweet smelling savor unto the Lord, accomplishing the forgiveness of their sins. But notice now it describes Jesus in this way. Ephesians 5, 2. Live a life filled with love, following the example of Christ. He loved us and what? Offered himself as a sacrifice for us. Here it is, a pleasing aroma to God. Where do you think Paul got that analogy? He got it from borrowing from Leviticus chapter 1, verse 9, a sweet smelling aroma to the Lord. Now, let me show you something else about this bronze altar. The Bible says that this fire was supposed to be continually burning. And it also says that this fire was not started by man. It was the fire from the Lord that came down to consume this animal. Let's read about it. It says here, Leviticus 6, 13, remember the fire must be kept burning on the altar at all times. It must never go out. The application is quite clear, my friend. This is letting us know that no matter what time of day, no matter what you're going through, whether you're up, whether you're down, whether it's three o'clock in the morning, the forgiveness of God is always available to you 24 seven. You don't have to wait. The fire of forgiveness to wash and cleanse you of your sins is always available. Now let's take a look at another way that Jesus fulfilled this. And then I'm gonna share with you some other points of application that are super important as it relates to the bronze altar. Hebrews chapter nine, and by the way, one of the blessings of studying the Old Testament tabernacle of Moses is that it really helps you better understand the New Testament book of Hebrews, which oftentimes points back to the Old Testament sacrificial system. Notice what it says here. With his own blood, not the blood of goats and calves, he entered the most holy place once for all time and secured our redemption forever. Notice that in the Old Testament, every time you sinned, you had to bring a new bull, or a new goat rather, a new sheep, pigeon, turtle dove or whatever. But Jesus says, you know what? You're not gonna be able to bring enough offering to be able to earn your own merit before me. So instead, I'm going to come and offer myself as a sacrifice on the cross, not every day, but one time covering the sins of all people. 
Now, let me show you another amazing parallel here as it relates to the ministry of the priest and the application for us today. You're going to love this. Notice it says here in Exodus 29, 38 and 39. These are the sacrifices you are to offer regularly on the altar. Each day, offer two lambs that are a year old, one in the morning and the other in the evening. So notice that in the Old Testament, a priest was required to offer a sacrifice only two times a day. But notice what the New Testament says that is required for us because we are now priests, 1 Peter 2, 9, and this is what the Lord says. It says here in Romans 12, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. This is basically saying, God, I'm not just going to come to you twice a day and then the rest of the day I do what I want to do. Paul is saying every day, every part of you should be you offering yourself as a living sacrifice to say, Lord, do with me what you want to do. Just like that animal that was slain. Lord, I am at your mercy. Do with my life whatever it is that you want to do. I'm offering and presenting my life to you. Now, 1 Peter also says the same thing. And you are living stones that God is building into his spiritual temple. What more? You are his holy priests. There it is. Through the mediation of Jesus Christ, you offer spiritual sacrifices that please God. So my friend, this is what the bronze altar of sacrifice is all about. You can see how clearly that Jesus is the ultimate fulfillment of this sacrificial system where he gave his life for uh, our sins. And as a result, we are to offer our lives as a sacrifice back to him. So we're just getting started in this series. I hope you're enjoying this. Let a friend know that we are going through this. Once again, every two days, I'm going to be releasing a new video. And in the next video, we're going to take the next step forward as we go through the Old Testament tabernacle of Moses. If you found this video helpful in any way, feel free to share it with a friend. Also, if you haven't done so already, I would love it if you would subscribe. Check out some of the other videos. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time on The Beat.